sir? Yeah. All right, thanks. Um, web application security, I'm here to talk about. Well, first, uh, about me, I've been working uh, web application security for about three years. Some of the things I've seen, how to get into uh, different systems on a purely web application level, not the web server, more like the CGI's on top of it. So uh, I'll just briefly go over what a web application is. Uh, web applications, basically a CGI. There are uh, message boards, uh, web mail, guest books, auctions, online banking, stock quotes. The biggest companies run these things. Uh, they're everywhere. You see them. You do. If you go on the web and do just about anything, chances are you're working on a web application. So, what as uh, you know, security folks do we see, and uh, you know how to break them down, how to uh, circumvent the security in them. So that's uh, what I'll be uh, covering. Um, so the, the scope of the topic I'm going to try to keep to on the client side of the connection. Web application security does deal with the actual exploitation of the system. However, uh, RFP or Many other people cover it a lot better than I do, so this is sticking to basic client level, attacking the browsers, attacking the cookies, and things of that nature. However, if you guys have like system things you want to ask, go for it. Uh, also, if you guys have any questions, anytime, go for it. Um, so, who uses web applications? Uh, eBay, <laughs> Yahoo, Microsoft Hotmail, uh, <laughs> E-Trade. Anybody got some more? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that? Right, that's, that's a web application too, like say like Linksys routers and stuff like that. That would be a web application. Right, uh, these like distance learning and things like that? Right, right, right. Like all advantage or something, or <laughs> not sure exactly. I follow, but if you have questions on it, so. um, <laughs> porno sites. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, from a security standpoint, when you're auditing a system or I'm attacking a system, generally there's three main types when I'm trying to profile a system as far as learning about it and what I'm seeing. Um, there's the CGIs or the web applications that allow the user to input HTML and get an echo of HTML back where it means it might be filtered, but it still comes back as HTML. It's actually allowable. Seen in chat rooms and message boards and things of that nature where it stays HTML. The other ones are the ones that do not allow HTML at all the ones that strip it out blatantly for whatever reason, you know, we'll figure out why later. Um, and the other ones are systems that uh, use their own subset of HTML. I won't cover this too much, but you'll come across like chat rooms and message boards and stuff like that where you want to change the formatting of the web application. You have to use their own subset of tags. And there's also the ones I'll briefly co cover on uh, the ones that use Java-based uh, engines to run it. Um, the chat rooms like, you know, Java-based client that connects to IRC or something like that. There's a lot of them out there, but I won't cover those too much because they're kind of their, their own embedded app. Um, so when you have a CGI, what kind of things are you exposed to by putting it up on the web where everyone can look at it? Um, there's system exploits uh, on the system itself. You can, there's browser redirects for the user if you can find it. Uh, and, and imp implement a CGI bug, you could throw an entire site to another site, say a porno site, that would be kind of fun. Um, there's a page spoofing where we've seen instances of a bug being exploited in a system where the user gets a fake login page and they unwittingly give up their username and password. Uh, there's also theft of, the, of uh, their cookie file on that domain which could give up their authentication for that particular session. Um, and there's also things you can you can get user information and you can also track the user even though it's not really your site. Um, so we can cover, uh, anybody have a question so far? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question? No, I'm just, no, it's for myself. <laughs> um, the, okay, well, first we'll cover the systems that allow HTML. Um, let's see here. Or let's, let's go over 
the basic cookie security because a lot of sites they use uh, cookies for simple authentication and re-authentication as they move through the sites also like for uh, shopping carts and things like that where the cookie actually keeps track of the actual session um, basic cookie security is a particular website should not have access to any cookies or only should have access to cookies for its particular domain it shouldn't get access to cookies from another domain however uh, nice people at Microsoft with that latest IE bug kind of destroyed that one um, but uh, basically that's the security implementation um, let's see so let's say you found a a world's coverage okay what is JavaScript now what does JavaScript have uh, access to JavaScript when you're implementing into the system into like a chat room or a message board or something like that what does it actually have access to well it has access to all the browser information has access to the IPs of the user um, all the plugins and the paths to the plugins um, just about everything that they're using it also has access to the cookie files and their environmental variables uh, the important one that it has access access is to the domain that JavaScript is executing on it has access to the cookies on that domain now the trick would be for a supposed hacker or malicious user is to try to get the user's cookies off the domain into another domain okay so I'll show you uh, how a lot of how it's that's accomplished um, how that is accomplished is if a user was to put HTML and JavaScript into a message board and you were to go read that message that JavaScript would execute in your browser environment okay it would be able to grab the domain cookie string and append it to some HTML mechanism that would send a get request off the domain to somewhere else for instance you could change the source of an image on that page and append it to the end so it, a get request would go to another server off the domain and you'd get the actual cookie string hope that's like clear <laughs> okay anybody have any questions on that so I know what I did get clear <laughs> yes it's a uh, okay I guess it would the flaw would lie in JavaScript okay if you're able to put JavaScript into a system and users would read it okay if a user would read it the code would grab the string and say I'll make it real simple open a new window with the attackers uh, uh, domain and append it to it with a CGI and append the cookie data to the CGI variable so it would it would do a get request with the CG with the cookie value off of the CGI so basically the whole cookie value gets passed to the CGI off the domain that's it's for authentication that seems to be the one of the more widespread ones if you're able to get the users cookies you could some you can replace your cookie with theirs and essence in essence become them so you know if uh, an active e-trade user was running grab their cookie file so replace it with yours and guess what you get to trade stocks in their account um, so now in a lot of systems they'll have a I guess HTML JavaScript filters to try to clean up the problem so but still have to allow I know for whatever formatting reason to get keep HTML and JavaScript in this uh, HTML itself for the users I don't know, features so uh, I'll talk about some of the ways to get around it or how you test it um, the, the basic 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 uh, tags you doing as when you're running off CGI what you don't want to allow into your system to be able to, for the user to pass into the message board are the following tags uh, you don't want to have the P tag go in and I'll explain these why later you don't have the applet tag come in uh, the embed script layer frame set frame HTML body style meta or object there's a lot of them you have to filter um, if you like for instance if you allow the applet tag into the system into a system that allows HTML they can load a whatever Java applet you want and do whatever to them on somebody else's domain you know imagine if somebody you know like uh, Microsoft Hotmail you email somebody a message with a with an applet and it loads and then you have access to their everything on their domain with a Java applet um, the same thing goes for you know uh, the style tag embed 
anything of that nature. So those tags you actually have to strip out even though you're allowed HTML. Nothing good can uh, happen when you're, uh, when you're uh, using those tags. So the script tag? The P tag. Uh, there's a known there's a known exploit that's been posted to bug track. I think uh, George Ganinsky found it, where you can actually add a, a VB uh, expression that actually execute JavaScript without actually having any JavaScript looking things in it. So nobody knows really to filter for it. You'll find it on bug track and things like that, um, which uh, breaks right into the the things that you can check in your own CGI's or other people's CGI. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to comment. One of the original reasons why the URL came out as a philosophy or a tool was that you had one address that was pretty much consistent for this is the request you're giving to the server, and then it's going to give you something back. Right. And we've seen with form posting and with cookies that this constraint is everything you need for the message to the URL mm -hmm. has been violated. Uh, do you think that? Uh, the question was, um, do I think that more security should be in place for, say, forms of, of values being passed to the CGR to the web server as far as, should it, should it show you what you're actually sending them? I think yes, but... Uh, no one's no one's seen it so far. Basically, I guess the idea of the web is try to make it user friendly. But uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I'd, I'd like to be able to know uh, immediately what you know cookie data I'm sending without actually having to look in the cookie file. Um, that'd be my preference. Um, so when you're testing a system, if you're actually auditing your own systems or somebody else's systems, um, what can you actually test against? What actually are the exploits to get past the, uh, I guess, the string filters and things like that? One very simple one is the, uh, the script tag. If anybody's, you know, everybody should be familiar with HTML and JavaScript. The actual script tag, when you put an expression in there, you submit it to the system. You can, you can even try it like on, uh, like a lot of search engines. Uh, will allow you to put right into their search function, put a script tag in, and it brings back a script tag and it executes. Major no-no to have on your major site. Um, on another way to, uh, so what major sites do is they, they filter for the script tag itself, they'll strip it out, replace it with whatever, they'll strip it out completely or replace it with something, um, which is a good tactic and you should all use. Um, the, another way to get around that uh, would be to when you're submitting this, uh, to the search engine itself a string, instead of just one singular line, throw a carriage return in it, because it's actually a character, and it'll actually, a lot of times, beat. They won't escape the carriage return, so it'll actually beat the filters and still get by and echo back. Um, let's see. Uh, let me show you. Okay, you see the, the script tag way up there? That's the most basic one. Um, try that into a lot of places, and that will work. Um, so basically what you can do is, uh, if you know somebody's active on a session, say, like anywhere, like on Hotmail or something like that, and you email them, I'm not saying it works in Hotmail, but you email them some, uh, an HTML mail with uh, the, the, uh, the script tag in it, and it executes, you have access to everything that Hotmail actually has access to. Uh, the second one from the top is I call uh, image sourcing. Uh, basically what the idea is, the JavaScript colon and then the JavaScript expression will actually execute inside of Netscape and run. It doesn't actually look like JavaScript, but it actually works. So sites will have to um, look for the JavaScript keyword and like separate it somehow or do whatever they want to do so it doesn't execute anything other than what it originally looks like before it gets echoed back to the user it has to be done. Um, and the ones below it were actually Netscape's uh, code names for JavaScript while they're developing it. Mocha and LiveScript and replace of JavaScript will also work. Which is uh, quite nice of uh, Netscape not to tell us about. 
Um, so basically those, uh, in all systems that allow HTML, have to strip those out before they get echoed back to the user. Otherwise, you know, the security breakdown again. Uh, the singular line break below that is what I was talking about before. That will still execute in Netscape and beat a lot of filters. Um, the the multi-line break, so, you know, trying these against systems, they'll get smart and wise up and start escaping the, the carriage returns. Well, you can multi-carriage return it and it still works. So you get the, escape the whole thing. So we begin to start to see the thing where HTML and JavaScript start not to look like HTML and JavaScript. It looks visually broken, but it still works. So you still have to, uh, you know, clean it up before it gets echoed back to the user. Um, the one just below it, uh, HTML entity string break. Um, this is one that's uh, like an HTML entity of just like a weird character you want to uh, you want to display. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you have a question? Um, God. I haven't seen any commercially available ones. Most uh, companies that I deal with have been writing their own for their own developers, which means that they want to strip. Uh, like things like this out, they'll write their own libraries and have all imp all user input variables filter through them, and then they can use them. Or that just blatantly rip out every instance of HTML. I haven't seen any commercial products that do this, so everybody's kind of on their own until someone figures one out. Um, the HTML entity string, um, the ampersand uh, pound sign zero nine semicolon. It's just a I think that's like a tab or something in ASCII and the whole ASCII set is available in Netscape, so you can make all the weird characters show up. But I found that uh, that particular string, uh, 9 through 12, actually breaks it up and will still execute. So it'll bypass the implemented filters once again. So things like that will work. So basically what happens is when you throw that into the system and you know, you've used source on it, um, that will actually not look like that, but it'll be separated, but still work. Um, Right, that's the most effective way I've seen so far on a system that does not want to allow HTML into the system. You rip out this less than and greater than signs and also the quotes. And uh, you lose all HTML functionality, yet you get all your security back. Yes, you will. So, you know, most chat rooms, message boards that allow that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the one just below it. Uh, HTML entity. Um, I did to figure out why this works, but I found it one day and it works. Um, the <laughs> the ampersand, uh, I guess, op open curly brace, and it, the syntax has to be perfect for it to work, and it only works in Netscape. The ampersand curly brace open has to be filtered for, otherwise JavaScript will execute any expression that you throw in there. So it might be a good one to remember because uh, it's posted out there, but it's hard to find. Oh, sure. Uh, she asked me to repeat the question before I answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um. Okay, when I'm auditing a system, uh, the the what I'm generally looking for is I'm looking at the URL, I'm looking at all the source code in the web page, looking at all the form values, looking at all the link URL values, anything that has a CGI and all the variables to it, and seeing what values it's taking, if it's taking any, and you know, like uh, shopping carts are notorious for this. When you're buying an item, it'll have price equals, and then you submit. Right. So what stops me from, you know, I'll buy like my, you know, like Sony Bio here from, you know, 3000 I'll just make it five bucks. <laughs> uh, many, many sites put this in there and trust the value that I give it and I bought a laptop for five dollars. So. Well, I didn't get that question. <laughs> How do you know that? Uh, take the fifth. <laughs> um, also, all the strings. A lot of times uh, developers will put strings inside of uh, URL variables and stuff that you actually get uh, thrown up on the page, for instance, like ads and things like that. Um, so a lot of times they don't filter those, so you might want to play with the strings also and see what uh, actual variables are getting filtered and what aren't. Um, you know, you could change it to anything, change it to JavaScript, HTML, um, put a negative
get a 999 in there and crash the CGI. Um, many, many things. Um, also, what I had to mention is many CGIs, when they're uh, doing authentication for the users that aren't using cookies, they use a login equals. And uh, like for portfolios and things like that. So if you actually just change the login to a different username, you'll get their portfolio. Don't do this. People are looking. Um, now, basically, you've seen a lot of the exploits. There are more, but uh, as of yet, no one's put out a good security auditor yet. I've heard rumor of them, but uh, haven't seen any that good. Um, so, how to protect and defend. Um, do not trust any of the input that the user is going to give you from the website. I don't care if it's the browser information, uh, their username and password, anything. Do not trust anything that they're giving you. Check everything, strip everything. Okay, because people are doing this with a lot of free time and testing every single value they could put into every variable and just seeing what your CGI does. So you have to account for everything. Um, one rule of thumb when you're developing a CGI, never, ever, ever allow JavaScript, Java, or any plugins that your site didn't create onto your, onto your system. So that means is, if your users are able to put JavaScript, Java, or a plugin on your system, you gotta disallow it because do very bad things. For instance, like uh, Flash has JavaScript in it, uh, as far as like a, like a sub-language with uh, Lingo, and they have full JavaScript functionality from inside of Flash, so you might think, you know, okay, I got everything, you know, everything all blocked, and you're allowing them to use Flash, and all of a sudden, no, your whole entire user base shifted to somewhere else. Um, also, if you're really security paranoid, and you're running, like, you know, say, you know, business.com, and you have to allow some of these things to go through, and you're really paranoid that you're not going to get everything right, like, say, for your message board, your chat room, you want to keep pretty good security for the cookies themselves, Host it on a different top-level domain. Host it like, instead of like business.com, go through business.net. That's the way all your .com uh, cookies are held safe for the moment until you move them back to business.com. It's a, a method I've seen work pretty effective in the past. Um, again, uh, somebody asked the question how to defend. Uh, if you're in a work group type environment, create libraries to do H uh, HTML stripping that all your uh, developers can use. and and funnel all the uh, user input variables through and get them back out so they know all the variables are safe to use, both uh, in the user's environment and out of the user's environment. And also, one more authentication scheme that I've seen a, a lot of people use is when you're doing uh, cookie-based authentication and you're doing a session ID with, a, you know, you're hashing the username and password with a random variable or something, you can actually re rehash another var variable, let's say like on a form submittal, you put a hidden variable inside the form that you're submitting to the CGI with a hash of their cookie, okay? That means no one else is going to be able to submit the form off of your site. I don't know if that, that's quite clear. It's kind of like uh, tagging the web page of, you know, sorts. So, um, uh, well, let's say, uh, well, I'll use Hotmail, for instance. Let's say they're doing a session-based ID, uh, uh, session-based authentication. And you don't want people logging into Hotmail from places other than Hotmail. So what you would theoretically do is run a hash on their, their cookie that's in their system and tag it as a hidden variable inside your login page. That way if you move it to somewhere else and try to submit again with different values, it will fail because the, because the hash won't match. Um, The hash has to be server generated, otherwise it defeats the purpose. Sure. Right. Yeah, the question was, uh, you'll pass uh, different or uh, multiple var variables off pages as you go through, so it's important to check every single variable as you're going through the site, so basically you have to crawl the whole site and be thorough. Um, any other questions? Oh. It seems like 
the, uh, the, the question was uh, what I feel that this is a problem of, uh, I guess, lazy developers not looking, doing correct string uh, matches or not being very security conscious in general. Um, basically, I would say yes and no. One, I would say yes, they're lazy programmers. They're not looking at bug track or the other sources for the uh, known exploits. Two, no, they aren't because they don't know them all. So they can't filter for something that they didn't know existed. Yes, it does. That's, the, that's why HTML email pretty much exists. Uh, I'm sorry. He asked, uh, does uh, HTML mail execute JavaScript? Yeah, it can. That's, you know, you'll see in the news all those Hotmail exploits and stuff like that. That's that. <laughs> uh, those I haven't played with firsthand, but uh, problems with those probably could and do exist. So. Any other questions? a couple, but I wouldn't classify them as good yet. They're looking for, basically the tools that I've seen are looking on a, com they're, they're auditing uh, commercially available applications. Most bigger systems where these are going to be needed the most are not something that you can uh, write an immediate big software package for because they're, uh, they're proprietary and you have to do it manually now unless somebody comes up with something pretty good and I haven't seen that yet. Basically, you would, you would, uh, his question was about how to def you know, defeating the uh, the hashing. I guess it wasn't quite clear on that. You hash a variable, like a ran something random, on the page and also part of their session with a, only a hash that you possess. You have to keep your hash kind of you know private um, and do it that way. Not you have to use something on the server side that only the user has and the site has. So it has to be done well. I I probably not explain it well as like applied cryptography would, but you could you can hash the page and have it work well. Well, that's the idea. Uh, that's the idea of hashing. You can't go backwards. At least I can't. <laughs> uh, any other question? Uh, go ahead. Uh, if you turn off uh, the the. The, his question was, if you turn off JavaScript and Java, will the image sourcing one work? Uh, no, it won't. All JavaScript is pretty much turned off, but that makes for a pretty lousy web environment. Everything breaks on the web, as if those who run it have seen. Any other questions? All right, I guess that's it. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay. Is it to, well, what, how I feel about crypting the browser session and or the data being passed, right? Um, I would say I would like it all encrypted. However, uh, uh, I guess the, uh, the RSA licensing gets pretty expensive from time to time. I mean, you have to get a license for every single server, so it gets pretty expensive. That's why they only do it on, you know, purchases and stuff like that. But I would like to see all of it, but we don't have it yet. But even if this is encrypted, this does not stop this effect at all because the data on the client is not yeah, basically, uh, he's talking about client side. Uh, I guess client side signing is he could claim to be whoever he wants, and there's no checking on the client side end. So yeah, you're right. Um, also, actually, I, I didn't get to ask Jennifer Granick one question. I don't know if she's here or not, but basically, uh, I, I wonder if you know viewing the source of a web page would fall under uh, unauthorized access of the source code of an interpreted page, <laughs> or. Uh, or uh, I guess uh, fall under reverse engineer of the DMCA. <laughs> what I'm doing the source code of a web page fall under that? Uh, 
don't know, maybe. Um, unless there's any other question, I guess that. Oh, that's right there. say, uh, I guess some people want to direct traffic away from your site to somewhere else and they post something in your site. That means all your visitors that go to your site get to forwarded to somewhere else. That would be one other thing. <laughs> if they can't put, well, if, if you're the only one posting the information on your site, then you're pretty much clean. That means everything that you do is your fault. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, um, is there a way? Uh, the parent frame is uh, he's actually in a way to hide the URL if I know any ways I haven't seen any really good ways to do it I say the, the parent frame uh, the parent frame uh, technique works quite well I haven't seen any other really good ways I was I have seen uh, begin to load a page and then stop the load and then he kind of gets a, a URL that way but I haven't seen any really good ways that's kind of weak Uh, the, the question was, you can actually, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that one, it's a pretty good one. Um, a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, browsers and search engines will take not only ASCII as a domain name, but you can actually, or like IP addresses, you can actually re-encode them in URL encode and get those to work, or you can get hacks to work. I've seen Octal work and everything like that, so those are actually good uh, filter, uh, filter passing mechanisms. Um, Uh, so, uh, the question was uh, using hidden iframes. Yeah, uh, hit hidden iframes. You can use hidden layers and do it that way. Lots of ways. So uh, yeah, d again, don't allow allow, allow uh, people in putting layers on your page. Bad, bad, bad news. Anyone else? Oh, okay. Yeah, the the p tag. I can't. I, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. Ha I don't have like the perfect syntax memorized to type it out for you. However. Uh, there's a, I guess in VBScript, there's a left, col uh, left colon expression. You can search for that under the P tag. I think uh, George Ikaninsky on his site has it posted, but uh, it's a VBScript expression that will execute. Uh, also, style has one uh, similar like that. On a style tag, you have uh, type equals, uh, and you can put JavaScript and stuff in between it, in between the end, beginning and style tags. And once again, JavaScript's into the system. JavaScript's like pretty much a cockroach. You have to exterminate it. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. I really don't have no XML all that well, but from what I read from the specs, it seems it's like, for instance, the ones that look, uh, you know, vi broken to the vi uh, visually don't work under XML because it's very specific, meaning the programming is, is not forgiving when you make a mistake. So, any other questions? Uh, what, what time? What time do we got? Pro two. Sound early. <laughs> Um, that's all I got, so.